Hey, hi, everybody. My name is Jerry Wise, and I'm a life and relationship coach. And this video is entitled, I Grew Up in a Dysfunctional Family. What are the signs of a functioning family? I hope you'll subscribe, comment, and like this video. I want to share with you probably about 11 different traits of a functional family. Number one, clear communication and open expression of feelings. Families that function well tend to have open lines of communication where all members feel comfortable expressing their thoughts, feelings, and opinions without fear of judgment or retaliation. In families that function, they experience a low amount of fear, a low amount of anxiety, and a small or a low amount of insecurity. And so this allows for more communication. This allows members to be more vulnerable, more honest, revealing of how they truly feel. Because to share how we truly feel does require learning in a safe environment. Highly anxious, highly critical, highly defensive, overly sensitive, dysfunctional families function with judgments, pecking orders, who's up, who's down, and retaliation. Functioning families possess a safety that does not require anxiety, criticalness, defensiveness, or intense sensitivity or reactivity. In fact, safety and acceptance and love are much more important in a functioning family than being right, being on top, having power or retaliation, or even being agreed with. Again, Safety, acceptance, and love are much more characteristics of a functioning family. Functioning families are more interested in harmony and cooperation than in power and force. Number two, respect for each other's boundaries, each other's differences, each other's individuality. Families that function well tend to respect each other's privacy and personal space and support each other's unique interests, unique goals, and unique aspirations for the individuals. In dysfunctional families, there's little daylight between my emotional self and your emotional self. What I think, what you think. What I believe, what you believe. My beliefs and your beliefs, my normal and your normal are all very fused together in a dysfunctional family and a lot of emotional infusement. This enmeshment has no room for boundaries, differences, or individuality, unless it serves the family super self. In other words, you can be different if it shines the image of the family, if it makes insecure parents feel pride, if it's something the narcissistic parent can take credit for, if it adds success to the alcoholic's family's shame, so if you're different in those ways, then we can be happy about that, but not happy about it because you're different or successful in your own right. It has to balance out the negatives in the family, in dysfunctional families. Respect implies a certain healthy level of separateness. Respect starts from an I am not you, you are not me awareness. It doesn't have the flavor of ownership, entitlement, and relationships that are just based on bloodline. In other words, I can be a horrible mother or I can be a horrible father, but you need to respect me because the Bible says honor your father and your mother. And again, that's kind of a superficial relationship that doesn't command or doesn't call the parents to be responsible in their parenting. It only calls for the child to be beholding to the parent, and it's a one-way street. And I'm not sure that's the meaning of that verse. Number three, support for each other's goals and aspirations. Families that function well tend to encourage and support each other's goals and aspirations. Whether they be academic, career, or personal, Functioning families support the members' goals and aspirations versus only supporting the family's unhealthy goals, needs, and aspirations. 
And again, I'm back to that family super self. The family super self is what takes precedent over any of the individuals in a dysfunctional family. That family super self is far less needed for functional families. There still may be a part of it because I think we all have a family super self that we came from, but many are much more toxic and dysfunctional than others. Number four, problem solving skills and the ability to compromise. Families that function well tend to have an ability to work together to solve problems and conflicts and are willing to compromise when necessary. Healthy families can agree to disagree. They also don't see disagreements as threatening or as a threat. A lack of rigidity and a lack of black and white thinking helps functional families to compromise. I'll give a little and you give a little. It doesn't come down to a battle of all or nothing. And in dysfunctional families, it tends to be all or nothing. Conflict is seen in a functional family as something to be resolved, not something to be feared or ignored. Number five, a sense of humor. Families that function well tend to have a good sense of humor and can laugh together, even in difficult situations. Dysfunctional families tend to be over serious. That doesn't mean they may never have any fun, but the fun and humor offered is often offered at the expense of others or one or more of the family members. Dysfunctional families laugh at people and things, and situations, but often it's a laughing at. In healthy families, it's a laughing together. In healthy families, functional families, there's good-hearted, well-intentioned fun versus fun to dissipate anger or dissipate pain. And again, everybody in the family may make fun of and laugh about the scapegoat. But if you notice, that's at the expense of the scapegoat. And that's not healthy humor or healthy fun. Only for the in crowd, not for the person on the out. Number six, a balance of independence and interdependence. Families that function well tend to have a balance of independence and interdependence, where each member has their own space and identity, but also relies on and supports the other members in the family. Dysfunctional families have chronic wounding or trauma. This wounding enmeshes the dysfunctional family together emotionally, self-wise, identity-wise, thought-wise, and in many other ways. It enmeshes us together and throws off the healthy balance and functional balance of I-ness and we-ness. In a functional family, we have a good balance of I-ness and we-ness. It moves us together too closely when we've been wounded and having had trauma and other kinds of things that happens in dysfunctional families. It fuses us with the family, both mentally and emotionally. And what often we are connected to is that unhealthy family super self. And then we don't find our own self. We're just overwhelmed by this family super self that's always been there and continues within us. Number seven, showing love and affection. Families that function well tend to show love and affection. They tend to show that towards each other through physical touch, verbal affirmations, and acts of kindness. Functional families regarding love can show it, feel it, give it, and receive it. They feel love for others in the family and maybe to differing degrees, but they feel love for other members of the family. And if they don't feel that love for other family members, they choose to love them and choose those in their family with their love. So they can feel it and they choose it. If they don't feel it, they still choose it. And I think that's a healthy functioning family process. And again, I think that's very important because if we don't grow up feeling loved, it's hard to show and give love. We then end up showing kind of a counterfeit, which is over-functioning, 
codependency and fixing and rescuing, all of that's kind of a counterfeit love giving as I have seen it. And I'm recovering codependent and that's certainly how it felt for me. It didn't mean I wasn't trying to care about other people, but I didn't care for them in a mature, healthy way because I didn't really love me. And so I needed to learn that first. Number eight, a healthy balance of trust and accountability. Families that function well tend to trust each other and hold each other accountable while also being understanding and forgiving of mistakes. In healthy families, mistakes are not taken personally by others. If somebody makes a mistake, they don't go, oh, well, you meant to do. No, they figured that's a mistake you made, and I'm not going to take it personally. And being held responsible is not taken personally either, but is seen as an acceptable and appropriate thing to do based on my poor choices or my mistakes. If I've made mistakes, then I should be held accountable for those. And that's not being personally attacking to me. That's being appropriately loving, mature, and responsible. Number nine, a sense of belonging. Families that function well tend to create a sense of belonging where each member feels valued, respected, and is an important part of the family. Feeling valued is an important element in feeling like you belong. Dysfunctional families experience a poverty about valuing others. They do not feel valued enough so that they can give valuing away to others. And again, if you don't feel valued and never felt valued, how are you going to help someone else feel valued? You're probably going to send a counterfeit valuing rather than genuine valuing because you haven't experienced it yourself. Narcissistic members of dysfunctional families overvalue themselves and undervalue everybody else. In dysfunctional families, we learn we don't fit or we don't feel we fit in. We feel we don't belong, that we aren't worthy. We don't feel valued. We don't feel respected. And we really don't get that sense of belonging to a tribe and being a part of something in a healthy way. And many times, a lot of folks who have grown up in dysfunctional families would say, no, it wasn't I grew up in a tribe. I grew up in a cult. You know, I grew up in a prison. I grew up in, you know, far, far too much enmeshment. And cults is cancerous enmeshment. That's what cults are. Cults are cancerous. They just overgrow and they fuse living off the hosts of who they infect. Number 10 low reactivity, and a sense of calmness. Functional families interact with each other out of a sense of calmness and experience far less reactivity than their dysfunctional counterparts. And again, that's a unique characteristic we notice about families who are healthier or more functioning. There's not as much anxiety. There's not as much tension. There's not as much hypervigilance. There's not as much intensity. And I think we need that lowered intensity so we can thrive. Just like if you have a plant that gets too much sun and not enough water, that's an intensity that will kill it. So it needs a balance of sun and water and shade. And that's a much more measured type of organic life or biological life. And in dysfunctional families, It's more high anxiety and lots of reactivity that goes on. And that just becomes normal. And number 11, take responsibility for their own functioning and their own problems. Functional family members have self-awareness and relationship awareness about how they function in the family. They key into when they are over-functioning. Oh, I'm doing too much. I need to just calm down and relax. And when they're under-functioning, and they may be aware they're over-functioning, hey, I can't bring that dish to the Christmas that I always bring, but it takes hours to make. Hey, guys, I'm not going to be able to bring that dish. I've got too many things going on, and I just can't do it. And so they recognize they're over-functioning and don't do that, and also explain, hey, I wish I could bring that, but 
you know, it's not going to work out this time. That's being aware of their own functioning. And they are more aware of their under-functioning as well. Also, they have an inner sense to not triangulate in unhealthy way with others. They recognize when they have been too irritable, too angry, less affectionate, or fall short in their responsibilities within the family. So they have a self-awareness in this functional family. I hope that you'll subscribe. Please make a comment and please like this video. Thanks for listening. Have a great day and be wise.